Mississippi Listen is a state located in the southeastern region of the United States. Mississippi is the 32nd most extensive and 34th most populous of the 50 United States. It is bordered by Tennessee to the north, Alabama to the east, the Gulf of Mexico and Louisiana to the south, and Arkansas and Louisiana to the west. The state's western boundary is largely defined by the Mississippi River. Jackson, with a population of approximately 175,000 people, is both the state's capital and largest city. The state is heavily forested outside the Mississippi Delta area, which is the area between the Mississippi and Yazoo rivers. Before the American Civil War, most development in the state was along riverfronts, as the waterways were critical for transportation. Large gangs of slaves were used to work on cotton plantations. After the war, freedmen began to clear the bottomlands to the interior, in the process selling off timber and buying property. By the end of the 19th century, African Americans made up two-thirds of the Delta's property owners, but timber and railroad companies acquired much of the land after the financial crisis, which occurred when blacks were facing increasing racial discrimination and disfranchisement in the state. Clearing of the land for plantations altered the Delta's ecology, increasing the severity of flooding along the Mississippi by taking out trees and bushes that had absorbed excess waters. Much land is now held by agribusinesses. A largely rural state with agricultural areas dominated by industrial farms, Mississippi is ranked low or last among the states in such measures as health, educational attainment, and median household income. The state's catfish aquaculture farms produce the majority of farm-raised catfish consumed in the United States. Since the 1930s and the Great Migration of African Americans to the North and West, the majority of Mississippi's population has been white, although the state still has the highest percentage of black residents of any U.S. state. From the early 19th century to the 1930s, its residents were majority black, and before the American Civil War that population was composed largely of African American slaves. Democratic Party whites retained political power through disfranchisement and Jim Crow laws. In the first half of the 20th century, nearly 400,000 rural blacks left the state for work and opportunities in northern and midwestern cities, with another wave of migration around World War II to West Coast cities. In the early 1960s, Mississippi was the poorest state in the nation, with 86% of its non whites living below the poverty level. In 2010, 37% of Mississippians were African Americans, the highest percentage of African Americans in any U.S. state. Since regaining enforcement of their voting rights in the late 1960s, most African Americans have supported Democratic candidates in local, state, and national elections. Conservative whites have shifted to the Republican Party. African Americans are a majority in many counties of the Mississippi Yazoo Delta, an area of historic slave settlement during the plantation era. Etymology The state's name is derived from the Mississippi River, which flows along its western boundary. Settlers named it after the Ojibwe word Missizibi, Great River. Geography Mississippi is bordered to the north by Tennessee, to the east by Alabama, to the south by Louisiana and a narrow coast on the Gulf of Mexico, and to the west, across the Mississippi River, by Louisiana and Arkansas. In addition to its namesake, major rivers in Mississippi include the Big Black River, the Pearl River, the Yazoo River, the Pascagoula River, and the Tombigbee River. Major lakes include Ross Barnett Reservoir, Arkabootla Lake, Sardis Lake, and Granada Lake with the largest lake being Sardis Lake. Mississippi is entirely composed of lowlands, the highest point being Woodall Mountain, in the foothills of the Cumberland Mountains, 807 feet 246 meters above sea level. The lowest point is sea level at the Gulf Coast. The state's mean elevation is 300 feet 91 meters above sea level. Most of Mississippi is part of the East Gulf Coastal Plain. The coastal plain is generally composed of low hills, such as the Pine Hills in the south and the North Central Hills. The Pontotoc Ridge and the Fall Line Hills in the northeast have somewhat higher elevations. Yellow-brown loess soil is found in the western parts of the state. The northeast is a region of fertile black earth that extends into the Alabama Black Belt. The coastline includes large bays at Bay St. Louis, Biloxi, and Pascagoula. 
It is separated from the Gulf of Mexico proper by the shallow Mississippi Sound, which is partially sheltered by Petit Bois Island, Horn Island, East and West Ship Islands, Deer Island, Round Island, and Cat Island. The northwest remainder of the state consists of the Mississippi Delta, a section of the Mississippi Alluvial Plain. The plain is narrow in the south and widens north of Vicksburg. The region has rich soil, partly made up of silt which had been regularly deposited by the flood waters of the Mississippi River. Areas under the management of the National Park Service include Bryce's Cross Roads National Battlefield Site near Baldwin Gulf Islands National Seashore Natchez National Historical Park in Natchez Natchez Trace National Scenic Trail in Tupelo Natchez Trace Parkway Tupelo National Battlefield in Tupelo Vicksburg National Military Park and Cemetery in Vicksburg Major cities and towns Mississippi City population rankings of at least 50,000 United States Census Bureau as of 2010 Mississippi City population rankings of at least 20,000 but fewer than 50,000 United States Census Bureau as of 2010 Mississippi City population rankings of at least 10,000 but fewer than 20,000 United States Census Bureau as of 2010 See, lists of cities, towns and villages, census-designated places, metropolitan areas, micropolitan areas, and counties in Mississippi. Topic. Climate Mississippi has a humid subtropical climate with long, hot and humid summers, and short, mild winters. Temperatures average about 81 degrees Fahrenheit about 27 degrees Celsius in July and about 48 degrees Fahrenheit about 9 degrees Celsius in January. The temperature varies little statewide in the summer, however, in winter, the region near Mississippi Sound is significantly warmer than the inland portion of the state. The recorded temperature in Mississippi has ranged from minus 19 degrees Fahrenheit minus 28 degrees Celsius, in 1966, at Corinth in the northeast, to 115 degrees Fahrenheit 46 degrees Celsius, in 1930, at Holly Springs in the north. Heavy snowfall rarely occurs, but isn't unheard of, such as during the New Year's Eve 1963 snowstorm. Yearly precipitation generally increases from north to south, with the regions closer to the Gulf being the most humid. Thus, Clarksdale, in the northwest, gets about 50 inches about 1,270 millimeters of precipitation annually and Biloxi, in the south, about 61 inches about 1,550 millimeters. Small amounts of snow fall in northern and central Mississippi, snow is occasional in the southern part of the state. The late summer and fall is the seasonal period of risk for hurricanes moving inland from the Gulf of Mexico, especially in the southern part of the state. Hurricane Camille in 1969 and Hurricane Katrina in 2005, which killed 238 people in the state, were the most devastating hurricanes to hit the state. Both caused nearly total storm surge destruction of structures in and around Gulfport, Biloxi, and Pascagoula. As in the rest of the Deep South, thunderstorms are common in Mississippi, especially in the southern part of the state. On average, Mississippi has around 27 tornadoes annually, the northern part of the state has more tornadoes earlier in the year and the southern part a higher frequency later in the year. Two of the five deadliest tornadoes in U.S. history have occurred in the state. These storms struck Natchez, in southwest Mississippi see the Great Natchez Tornado and Tupelo, in the northeast corner of the state. About seven F5 tornadoes have been recorded in the state. Topic: <inaudible> Ecology, flora, and fauna. Mississippi is heavily forested, with over half of the state's area covered by wild or cultivated trees. The southeastern part of the state is dominated by longleaf pine, in both uplands and lowland flatwoods and Saracenia bogs. The Mississippi alluvial plain, or delta, is primarily farmland and aquaculture ponds but also has sizable tracts of cottonwood, willows, baldcypress, and oaks. A belt of loess extends north to south in the western part of the state, where the Mississippi alluvial plain reaches the first hills. This region is characterized by rich, mesic mixed hardwood forests, with some species disjunct from Appalachian forests. 
Two bands of historical prairie, the Jackson Prairie and the Black Belt, run northwest to southeast in the middle and northeastern part of the state. Although these areas have been highly degraded by conversion to agriculture, a few areas remain, consisting of grassland with interspersed woodland of eastern red cedar, oaks, hickories, osage orange, and sugarberry. The rest of the state, primarily north of Interstate 20 not including the prairie regions, consists of mixed pine hardwood forest, common species being loblolly pine, oaks e.g., water oak, hickories, sweetgum, and elm. Areas along large rivers are commonly inhabited by bald cypress, water tupelo, water elm, and bitter pecan. Commonly cultivated trees include loblolly pine, longleaf pine, cherry bark oak, and cottonwood. There are approximately 3,000 species of vascular plants known from Mississippi. As of 2018, a project funded by the U.S. National Science Foundation aims to update that checklist of plants with museum herbarium vouchers and create an online atlas of each species' distribution. About 420 species of birds are known to inhabit Mississippi. Mississippi has one of the richest fish faunas in the United States, with 204 native fish species. Mississippi also has a rich freshwater mussel fauna, with about 90 species in the primary family of native mussels. Unionity. Several of these species were extirpated during the construction of the Tennessee Tombigbee Waterway. Mississippi is home to 63 crayfish species, including at least 17 endemic species. Mississippi is home to eight winter stonefly species. Ecological problems Flooding Due to seasonal flooding, possible from December to June, the Mississippi and Yazoo rivers and their tributaries created a fertile floodplain in the Mississippi Delta. The river's flooding created natural levees, which planters had built higher to try to prevent flooding of land cultivated for cotton crops. Temporary workers built levees along the Mississippi River on top of the natural levees that formed from dirt deposited after the river flooded. From 1858 to 1861, the state took over levee building, accomplishing it through contractors and hired labor. In those years, planters considered their slaves too valuable to hire out for such dangerous work. Contractors hired gangs of Irish immigrant laborers to build levees and sometimes clear land. Many of the Irish were relatively recent immigrants from the famine years who were struggling to get established. Before the American Civil War, the earthwork levees averaged 6 feet in height, although in some areas they reached 20 feet. Flooding has been an integral part of Mississippi history, but clearing of the land for cultivation and to supply wood fuel for steamboats took away the absorption of trees and undergrowth. The banks of the river were denuded, becoming unstable and changing the character of the river. After the Civil War, major floods swept down the valley in 1865, 1867, 1874 and 1882. Such floods regularly overwhelmed levees damaged by Confederate and Union fighting during the war, as well as those constructed after the war. In 1877, the state created the Mississippi Levee District for southern counties. In 1879, the United States Congress created the Mississippi River Commission, whose responsibilities included aiding state levee boards in the construction of levees. Both white and black transient workers were hired to build the levees in the late 19th century. By 1882, levees averaged seven feet in height, but many in the southern delta were severely tested by the flood that year. After the 1882 flood, the levee system was expanded. In 1884, the Yazoo Mississippi Delta Levee District was established to oversee levee construction and maintenance in the northern Delta counties. Also included were some counties in Arkansas which were part of the Delta. Flooding overwhelmed northwestern Mississippi in 1912 1913, causing heavy damage to the levee districts. Regional losses and the Mississippi River Levee Association's lobbying for a flood control bill helped gain passage of national bills in 1917 and 1923 to provide federal matching funds for local levee districts, on a scale of 2 to 1. Although U.S. participation in World War I interrupted funding of levees, the second round of funding helped raise the average height of levees in the Mississippi Yazoo Delta to 22 feet meters in the 1920s. Scientists now understand the levees have increased the severity of flooding by increasing the flow speed of the river and reducing the area of the floodplains. 
The region was severely damaged due to the Great Mississippi Flood of 1927, which broke through the levees. There were losses of millions of dollars in property, stock and crops. The most damage occurred in the lower delta, including Washington and Bolivar counties. Even as scientific knowledge about the Mississippi River has grown, upstream development and the consequences of the levees have caused more severe flooding in some years. Scientists now understand that the widespread clearing of land and building of the levees have changed the nature of the river. Such work removed the natural protection and absorption of wetlands and forest cover, strengthening the river's current. The state and federal governments have been struggling for the best approaches to restore some natural habitats in order to best interact with the original riverine ecology. History Near 10,000 BC Native Americans or Paleo-Indians arrived in what today is referred to as the American South. Paleo-Indians in the South were hunter-gatherers who pursued the megafauna that became extinct following the end of the Pleistocene Age. In the Mississippi Delta, Native American settlements and agricultural fields were developed on the natural levees, higher ground in the proximity of rivers. The Native Americans developed extensive fields near their permanent villages. Together with other practices, they created some localized deforestation but did not alter the ecology of the Mississippi Delta as a whole. After thousands of years, succeeding cultures of the woodland and Mississippian culture eras developed rich and complex agricultural societies, in which surplus supported the development of specialized trades. Both were mound builder cultures. Those of the Mississippian culture were the largest and most complex, constructed beginning about 950 CE. The peoples had a trading network spanning the continent from the Great Lakes to the Gulf Coast. Their large earthworks, which expressed their cosmology of political and religious concepts, still stand throughout the Mississippi and Ohio River valleys. Descendant Native American tribes of the Mississippian culture in the southeast include the Chickasaw and Choctaw. Other tribes who inhabited the territory of Mississippi and whose names were honored by colonists in local towns include the Natchez, the Yazoo, and the Biloxi. The first major European expedition into the territory that became Mississippi was that of the Spanish explorer, Hernando de Soto, who passed through the northeast part of the state in 1540, in his second expedition to the New World. Colonial era In April 1699, French colonists established the first European settlement at Fort Morepas, also known as Old Biloxi, built in the vicinity of present-day Ocean Springs on the Gulf Coast. It was settled by Pierre Le Moyne d'Iberville. In 1716, the French founded Natchez on the Mississippi River as Fort Rosalie. It became the dominant town and trading post of the area. The French called the greater territory New France. The Spanish continued to claim part of the Gulf Coast area east of Mobile Bay of present-day southern Alabama, in addition to the entire area of present-day Florida. Through the 18th century, the area was ruled variously by Spanish, French, and British colonial governments. The colonists imported African slaves as laborers. Under French and Spanish rule, there developed a class of free people of color gens de color libres, mostly multiracial descendants of European men and enslaved or free black women, and their mixed-race children. In the early days the French and Spanish colonists were chiefly men. Even as more European women joined the settlements, the men had interracial unions among women of African descent and increasingly, multiracial descent, both before and after marriages to European women. Often the European men would help their multiracial children get educated or gain apprenticeships for trades, and sometimes they settled property on them. They often freed the mothers and their children if enslaved, as part of contracts of placage. With this social capital, the free people of color became artisans, and sometimes educated merchants and property owners, forming a third class between the Europeans and most enslaved Africans in the French and Spanish settlements, although not so large a free community as in the city of New Orleans, Louisiana. After Great Britain's victory in the French and Indian War, Seven Years War the French surrendered the Mississippi area to them under the terms of the Treaty of Paris 1763. They also ceded their areas to the north that were east of the Mississippi River, including the Illinois country and Quebec. After the Peace of Paris 1783, the lower third of Mississippi came under Spanish rule as part of West Florida. 
In 1819 the United States completed the purchase of West Florida and all of East Florida in the adams onis Treaty, and in 1822 both were merged into the Florida Territory. <laughs> United States Territory After the American Revolution 1765 Britain ceded this area to the new United States of America. The Mississippi Territory was organized on April 7, 1798, from territory ceded by Georgia and South Carolina to the United States. Their original colonial charters theoretically extended west to the Pacific Ocean. The Mississippi Territory was later twice expanded to include disputed territory claimed by both the United States and Spain. From 1800 to about 1830, the United States purchased some lands Treaty of Doak's Stand from Native American tribes for new settlements of European Americans. They were mostly migrants from other southern states, particularly Virginia and North Carolina, where soils were exhausted. On September 27, 1830, the Treaty of Dancing Rabbit Creek was signed between the U.S. government and the Choctaw. The Choctaw agreed to sell their traditional homelands in Mississippi and Alabama, for compensation and removal to reservations in Indian Territory now Oklahoma. This opened up land for sale to European-American immigrant settlement. Article 14 in the treaty allowed those Choctaw who chose to remain in the state to become U.S. citizens, as they were considered to be giving up their tribal membership. They were the second major non-European ethnic group to do so, the Cherokee were the first. Today approximately 9,500 Choctaw live in Neshoba, Newton, Leek, and Jones counties. Federally recognized tribes include the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians. Many slaveholders brought slaves with them or purchased them through the domestic slave trade, especially in New Orleans. Through the trade, an estimated nearly one million slaves were transported to the Deep South, including Mississippi, in a forced internal migration that broke up many slave families of the Upper South, where planters were selling excess slaves. The Southerners imposed slave laws and restricted the rights of free blacks, according to their view of white supremacy. Beginning in 1822, slaves in Mississippi were protected by law from cruel and unusual punishment by their owners. The Southern Slave Codes made the willful killing of a slave illegal in most cases. For example, the 1860 Mississippi case of Oliver v. State charged the defendant with murdering his own slave. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Statehood 1817 to 1861. On December 10, 1817, Mississippi was the 20th state admitted to the Union. David Holmes was elected as the first governor of the state. At that time, the state was still occupied as ancestral land by several Native American tribes, including the Choctaw, Natchez, Homa, Creek, and Chickasaw peoples. Plantations were developed primarily along the major rivers, where the waterfront provided access to the major transportation routes. This is also where early towns developed, linked by the steamboats that carried commercial products and crops to markets. The remainder of Native American ancestral land remained largely undeveloped but was sold through treaties until 1826, when the Choctaws and Chickasaws refused to sell more land. The combination of the Mississippi State Legislature's abolition of Choctaw tribal government in 1829, President Andrew Jackson's Indian Removal Act and the Treaty of Dancing Rabbit Creek of 1830, the Choctaw were effectively forced to sell their land and were transported to Oklahoma Territory. The forced migration of the Choctaw, together with other southeastern tribes removed as a result of the act, became known as the Trail of Tears. When cotton was king during the 1850s, Mississippi plantation owners—especially those of the Delta and Black Belt Central regions— became wealthy due to the high fertility of the soil, the high price of cotton on the international market, and free labor gained through their holding enslaved African Americans. They used some of their profits to buy more cotton land and more slaves. The planters' dependence on hundreds of thousands of slaves for labor and the severe wealth imbalances among whites, played strong roles both in state politics and in planters' support for secession. Mississippi was a slave society, with the economy dependent on slavery. The state was thinly settled, with population concentrated in the riverfront areas and towns. 
By 1860, the enslaved African American population numbered 436,631 or 55% of the state's total of 791,305 persons. Fewer than 1,000 were free people of color. The relatively low population of the state before the Civil War reflected the fact that land and villages were developed only along the riverfronts, which formed the main transportation corridors. 90% of the Delta bottomlands were still frontier and undeveloped. The state needed many more settlers for development. The land further away from the rivers was cleared by freedmen and white migrants during Reconstruction and later. <laughs> Civil War to 20th century On January 9, 1861, Mississippi became the second state to declare its secession from the Union, and it was one of the founding members of the Confederate States. The first six states to secede were those with the highest number of slaves. During the war, Union and Confederate forces struggled for dominance on the Mississippi River, critical to supply routes and commerce. More than 80,000 Mississippians fought in the Civil War, and casualties were extremely heavy. Union General Ulysses S. Grant's long siege of Vicksburg finally gained the Union control of the river in 1863. In the post-war period, freedmen withdrew from white-run churches to set up independent congregations. The majority of blacks left the Southern Baptist Church, sharply reducing its membership. They created independent black Baptist congregations. By 1895 they had established numerous Black Baptist State Associations and the National Baptist Convention of Black Churches. In addition, independent black denominations, such as the African Methodist Episcopal Church established in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the early 19th century and the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church established in New York City, sent missionaries to the South in the post-war years. They quickly attracted hundreds of thousands of converts and founded new churches across the South. Southern congregations brought their own influences to those denominations as well. During Reconstruction, the first Mississippi Constitutional Convention in 1868, with delegates both black and white, framed a constitution whose major elements would be maintained for 22 years. The convention was the first political organization in the state to include African American representatives, 17 among the 100 members, 32 counties had black majorities at the time. Some among the black delegates were freedmen, but others were educated free blacks who had migrated from the north. The convention adopted universal suffrage, did away with property qualifications for suffrage or for office, a change that also benefited both blacks and poor whites, provided for the state's first public school system, forbade race distinctions in the possession and inheritance of property, and prohibited limiting civil rights in travel. Under the terms of Reconstruction, Mississippi was restored to the Union on February 23, 1870. Because the Mississippi Delta contained so much fertile bottomland that had not been developed before the Civil War, 90% of the land was still frontier. After the Civil War, tens of thousands of migrants were attracted to the area by higher wages offered by planters trying to develop land. In addition, black and white workers could earn money by clearing the land and selling timber, and eventually advance to ownership. The new farmers included many freedmen, who by the late 19th century achieved unusually high rates of land ownership in the Mississippi bottomlands. In the 1870s and 1880s, many black farmers succeeded in gaining land ownership. Around the start of the 20th century, two thirds of the Mississippi farmers who owned land in the Delta were African American. But many had become overextended with debt during the falling cotton prices of the difficult years of the late 19th century. Cotton prices fell throughout the decades following the Civil War. As another agricultural depression lowered cotton prices into the 1890s, numerous African American farmers finally had to sell their land to pay off debts, thus losing the land which they had developed by hard, personal labor. Democrats had regained control of the state legislature in 1875, after a year of expanded violence against blacks and intimidation of whites in what was called the White Line campaign, based on asserting white supremacy. Democratic whites were well armed and formed paramilitary organizations such as the Red Shirts to suppress black voting. From 1874 to the elections of 1875, they pressured whites to join the Democrats, and conducted violence against blacks in at least 15 known riots in cities around the state to intimidate blacks. They killed a total of 150 blacks, although other estimates place the death toll at twice as many. 
A total of three white Republicans and five white Democrats were reported killed. In rural areas, deaths of blacks could be covered up. Riots better described as massacres of blacks took place in Vicksburg, Clinton, Macon, and in their counties, as well-armed whites broke up black meetings and lynched known black leaders, destroying local political organizations. Seeing the success of this deliberate, Mississippi Plan, South Carolina and other states followed it and also achieved white Democratic dominance. In 1877 by a national compromise, the last of federal troops were withdrawn from the region. Even in this environment, black Mississippians continued to be elected to local office. However, black residents were deprived of all political power after white legislators passed a new state constitution in 1890 specifically to eliminate the nigger from politics, according to the state's Democratic governor, James K. Vardaman. It erected barriers to voter registration and instituted electoral provisions that effectively disenfranchised most black Mississippians and many poor whites. Estimates are that 100,000 black and 50,000 white men were removed from voter registration rolls in the state over the next few years. The loss of political influence contributed to the difficulties of African Americans in their attempts to obtain extended credit in the late 19th century. Together with imposition of Jim Crow and racial segregation laws, whites increased violence against blacks, lynching mostly men, through the period of the 1890s and extending to 1930. Cotton crops failed due to boll weevil infestation and successive severe flooding in 1912 and 1913, creating crisis conditions for many African Americans. With control of the ballot box and more access to credit, white planters bought out such farmers, expanding their ownership of Delta bottomlands. They also took advantage of new railroads sponsored by the state. Topic: 20th century to present. In 1900, blacks made up more than half of the state's population. By 1910, a majority of black farmers in the Delta had lost their land and become sharecroppers. By 1920, the third generation after freedom, most African Americans in Mississippi were landless laborers again facing poverty. Starting about 1913, tens of thousands of black Americans left Mississippi for the North in the Great Migration to industrial cities such as St. Louis, Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Philadelphia and New York. They sought jobs, better education for their children, the right to vote, relative freedom from discrimination, and better living. In the migration of 1910 to 1940, they left a society that had been steadily closing off opportunity. Most migrants from Mississippi took trains directly north to Chicago and often settled near former neighbors. Blacks also faced violence in the form of lynching, shooting, and the burning of churches. In 1923, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People stated, The Negro feels that life is not safe in Mississippi and his life may be taken with impunity at any time upon the slightest pretext or provocation by a white man. In the early 20th century, some industries were established in Mississippi, but jobs were generally restricted to whites, including child workers. The lack of jobs also drove some Southern whites north to cities such as Chicago and Detroit, seeking employment, where they also competed with European immigrants. The state depended on agriculture, but mechanization put many farm laborers out of work. By 1900, many white ministers, especially in the towns, subscribed to the social gospel movement, which attempted to apply Christian ethics to social and economic needs of the day. Many strongly supported prohibition, believing it would help alleviate and prevent many sins. African American Baptist churches grew to include more than twice the number of members as their white Baptist counterparts. The African American call for social equality resonated throughout the Great Depression in the 1930s and World War II in the 1940s. The second Great Migration from the South started in the 1940s, lasting until 1970. Almost half a million people left Mississippi in the second migration, three quarters of them black. Nationwide during the first half of the 20th century, African Americans became rapidly urbanized and many worked in industrial jobs. The Second Great Migration included destinations in the West, especially California, where the buildup of the defense industry offered higher-paying jobs to both African Americans and whites. Blacks and whites in Mississippi generated rich, quintessentially American music traditions, gospel music, country music, jazz, blues and rock and roll. 
All were invented, promulgated or heavily developed by Mississippi musicians, many of them African American, and most came from the Mississippi Delta. Many musicians carried their music north to Chicago, where they made it the heart of that city's jazz and blues. So many African Americans left in the Great Migration that after the 1930s, they became a minority in Mississippi. In 1960 they made up 42% of the state's population. The whites maintained their discriminatory voter registration processes established in 1890, preventing most blacks from voting, even if they were well educated. Court challenges were not successful until later in the century. After World War II, African American veterans returned with renewed commitment to be treated as full citizens of the United States and increasingly organized to gain enforcement of their constitutional rights. The civil rights movement had many roots in religion, and the strong community of churches helped supply volunteers and moral purpose for their activism. Mississippi was a center of activity, based in black churches, to educate and register black voters, and to work for integration. In 1954 the state had created the Mississippi State Sovereignty Commission, a tax-supported agency, chaired by the governor, that claimed to work for the state's image but effectively spied on activists and passed information to the local white citizens' councils to suppress black activism. White citizens' councils had been formed in many cities and towns to resist integration of schools following the unanimous 1954 United States Supreme Court ruling Brown v. Board of Education that segregation of public schools was unconstitutional. They used intimidation and economic blackmail against activists and suspected activists, including teachers and other professionals. Techniques included loss of jobs and eviction from rental housing. In the summer of 1964 students and community organizers from across the country came to help register black voters in Mississippi and establish freedom schools. The Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party was established to challenge the all-white Democratic Party of the Solid South. Most white politicians resisted such changes. Chapters of the Ku Klux Klan and its sympathizers used violence against activists, most notably the murders of Cheney, Goodman, and Schwerner in 1964 during the Freedom Summer Campaign. This was a catalyst for congressional passage the following year of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Mississippi earned a reputation in the 1960s as a reactionary state. After decades of disenfranchisement, African Americans in the state gradually began to exercise their right to vote again for the first time since the 19th century, following the passage of federal civil rights legislation in 1964 and 1965, which ended de jure segregation and enforced constitutional voting rights. Registration of African American voters increased and black candidates ran in the 1967 elections for state and local offices. The Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party fielded some candidates. Teacher Robert G. Clark of Holmes County was the first African American to be elected to the State House since Reconstruction. He continued as the only African American in the state legislature until 1976 and was repeatedly elected into the 21st century, including three terms as Speaker of the House. In 1966, the state was the last to repeal officially statewide prohibition of alcohol. Before that, Mississippi had taxed the illegal alcohol brought in by bootleggers. Governor Paul Johnson urged repeal and the sheriff raided the annual Junior League Mardi Gras ball at the Jackson Country Club, breaking open the liquor cabinet and carting off the champagne before a startled crowd of nobility and high-ranking state officials." On August 17, 1969, Category 5 Hurricane Camille hit the Mississippi coast, killing 248 people and causing $1.5 billion in damage $1,969. Mississippi was the last state to ratify the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution, in March 1984, granting women the right to vote. In 1987, 20 years after the U.S. Supreme Court had ruled in 1967's Loving v. Virginia that a similar Virginian law was unconstitutional, Mississippi repealed its ban on interracial marriage, also known as miscegenation, which had been enacted in 1890. It also repealed the segregationist era poll tax in 1989. In 1995, the state symbolically ratified the 13th Amendment, which had abolished slavery in 1865. Though ratified in 1995, the state never officially notified the U.S. 
Archivist, which kept the ratification unofficial until 2013, when Ken Sullivan contacted the Office of Secretary of State of Mississippi, Delbert Hoseman, who agreed to file the paperwork and make it official. In 2009, the legislature passed a bill to repeal other discriminatory civil rights laws, which had been enacted in 1964, the same year as the Federal Civil Rights Act, but ruled unconstitutional in 1967 by federal courts. Republican Governor Haley Barber signed the bill into law. The end of legal segregation and Jim Crow led to the integration of some churches, but most today remain divided along racial and cultural lines, having developed different traditions. After the Civil War, most African Americans left white churches to establish their own independent congregations, particularly Baptist churches, establishing state associations and a national association by the end of the century. They wanted to express their own traditions of worship and practice. In more diverse communities, such as Hattiesburg, some churches have multiracial congregations. On August 29, 2005, Hurricane Katrina, though a Category 3 storm upon final landfall, caused even greater destruction across the entire 90 miles 145 kilometers of the Mississippi Gulf Coast from Louisiana to Alabama. Demographics The center of population of Mississippi is located in Leake County, in the town of Lena. The United States Census Bureau estimates that the population of Mississippi was 2,992,333 on July 1, 2015, a 0.84% increase since the 2010 United States Census. The state's economist characterized the state as losing population as job markets elsewhere have caused 3.2 per 1,000 to migrate recently. From 2000 to 2010, the United States Census Bureau reported that Mississippi had the highest rate of increase in people identifying as mixed race, up 70% in the decade. It amounts to a total of 1.1% of the population. In addition, Mississippi led the nation for most of the last decade in the growth of mixed marriages among its population. The total population has not increased significantly, but is young. Some of the above change in identification as mixed race is due to new births. But, it appears mostly to reflect those residents who have chosen to identify as more than one race, who in earlier years may have identified by just one ethnicity. A binary racial system had been in place since slavery times and the days of racial segregation. In the civil rights era, people of African descent banded together in an inclusive community to achieve political power and gain restoration of their civil rights. As the demographer William Frey noted, In Mississippi, I think it's identifying as mixed race changed from within. Historically in Mississippi, after Indian removal in the 1830s, the major groups were designated as black African American, who were then mostly enslaved, and white primarily European American. Matthew Snip, also a demographer, commented on the increase in the 21st century in the number of people identifying as being of more than one race. In a sense, they're rendering a more accurate portrait of their racial heritage that in the past would have been suppressed. After having comprised a majority of the state's population since well before the Civil War and through the 1930s, today African Americans comprise approximately 37% of the state's population. Most have ancestors who were enslaved, with many forcibly transported from the Upper South in the 19th century to work on the area's new plantations. Some of these slaves were mixed race, with European ancestors, as there were many children born into slavery with white fathers. Some also have Native American ancestry. During the first half of the 20th century, a total of nearly 400,000 African Americans left the state during the Great Migration, for opportunities in the North, Midwest and West. They became a minority in the state for the first time since early in its development. The state has had conservative laws related to sexuality. The state's sodomy law criminalized consensual sex between adults of the same gender until 2003, but was seldom enforced, when such laws were voided by the Supreme Court case Lawrence v. Texas. In 2004, voters in Mississippi approved Amendment 1, amending the state's constitution to prohibit same sex marriage. The measure passed with 86% of the vote, the highest margin of victory in the nation. This law was overturned by Obergefell v. Hodges. 2015, the decision of the U.S. Supreme Court making same sex marriage a constitutional right. Despite conservative laws, same sex couples were forming families in the state. 
According to the 2010 census, approximately 33% of households led by same sex couples in Mississippi included at least one child, the highest such percentage in the nation. Ancestry At the 2010 U.S. Census, the racial makeup of the population was 59.1% White American 58.0% Non-Hispanic White, 1.1% White Hispanic 37.0% African American or Black 0.5% American Indian and Alaska Native 0.9% Asian American 1.1% Multiracial American 1.4% other ethnically, 2.7% of the total population, among all racial groups, was of Hispanic or Latino origin they may be of any race. As of 2011, 53.8% of Mississippi's population younger than age 1 were minorities, meaning that they had at least one parent who was not non-Hispanic white. For more information on racial and ethnic classifications in the United States see Race and Ethnicity in the United States Census. Americans of Scots-Irish, English and Scottish ancestry are present throughout the state. It is believed that there are more people with such ancestry than identify as such on the census, in part because their immigrant ancestors are more distant in their family histories. English, Scottish and Scots-Irish are generally the most under-reported ancestry groups in both the South Atlantic states and the East-South Central states. The historian David Hackett Fisher estimated that a minimum 20% of Mississippi's population is of English ancestry, though the figure is probably much higher, and another large percentage is of Scottish ancestry. Many Mississippians of such ancestry identify simply as American on questionnaires, because their families have been in North America for centuries. In the 1980 census 656,371 Mississippians of a total of 1,946,775 identified as being of English ancestry, making them 38% of the state at the time. The state in 2010 had the highest proportion of African Americans in the nation. The African American percentage of population has begun to increase due mainly to a younger population than the whites the total fertility rates of the two races are approximately equal. Due to patterns of settlement and whites putting their children in private schools, in almost all of Mississippi's public school districts, a majority of students are African American. African Americans are the majority ethnic group in the northwestern Yazoo Delta, and the southwestern and the central parts of the state. These are areas where, historically, African Americans owned land as farmers in the 19th century following the Civil War, or worked on cotton plantations and farms. People of French Creole ancestry form the largest demographic group in Hancock County on the Gulf Coast. The African American, Choctaw, mostly in Neshoba County, and Chinese American portions of the population are also almost entirely native born. Chinese came to Mississippi as indentured laborers from Cuba during the 1870s, with others coming from mainland China in the later 19th century. The majority entering the state immigrated directly from China to Mississippi between 1910 and 1930, when they were recruited by planters as laborers. While most first worked as sharecroppers, the Chinese worked as families to improve their lives. Many became small merchants and especially grocers in small towns throughout the Delta. In these roles, the ethnic Chinese carved out a niche in the state between black and white, where they were concentrated in the Delta. These small towns have declined since the late 20th century, and many ethnic Chinese have joined the exodus to larger cities, including Jackson. Their population in the state overall has increased in the 21st century. In the early 1980s, many Vietnamese immigrated to Mississippi and other states along the Gulf of Mexico, where they became employed in fishing related work. Topic. Language In 2000, 96.4% of Mississippi residents five years old and older spoke only English in the home, a decrease from 97.2% in 1990. English is largely Southern American English, with some South Midland speech in northern and eastern Mississippi. There is a common absence of final r, and the lengthening and weakening of the diphthongs a, and as in ride and oil. South Midland terms in northern Mississippi include, toe sack burlap bag, dog irons andirons, plum peach, clingstone peach snake doctor dragonfly, and stone wall rock fence. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <inaudible> Religion. Under French and Spanish rule beginning in the 17th century, European colonists were mostly Roman Catholics. The growth of the cotton culture after 1815 brought in tens of thousands of Anglo-American settlers each year, most of whom were Protestants from southeastern states. Due to such migration, there was rapid growth in the number of Protestant churches, especially Methodist, Presbyterian and Baptist. The revivals of the Great Awakening in the late 18th and early 19th centuries initially attracted the plain folk by reaching out to all members of society, including women and blacks. Both slaves and free blacks were welcomed into Methodist and Baptist churches. Independent black Baptist churches were established before 1800 in Virginia, Kentucky, South Carolina and Georgia, and later developed in Mississippi as well. In the post-Civil War years, religion became more influential as the South became known as the Bible Belt. Since the 1970s, fundamentalist conservative churches have grown rapidly, fueling Mississippi's conservative political trends among whites. In 1973 the Presbyterian Church in America attracted numerous conservative congregations. As of 2010 Mississippi remained a stronghold of the denomination, which originally was brought by Scots immigrants. The state has the highest adherence rate of the PCA in 2010, with 121 congregations and 18,500 members. It is among the few states where the PCA has higher membership than the PC USA. According to the Association of Religion Data Archives in 2010 the Southern Baptist Convention had 907,384 adherents and was the largest religious denomination in the state, followed by the United Methodist Church with 204,165, and the Roman Catholic Church with 112,488. Other religions have a small presence in Mississippi. As of 2010, there were 5,012 Muslims, 4,389 Hindus, and 816 Baha'i. Public opinion polls have consistently ranked Mississippi as the most religious state in the United States, with 59% of Mississippians considering themselves very religious. The same survey also found that 11% of the population were non religious. In a 2009 Gallup poll, 63% of Mississippians said that they attended church weekly or almost weekly, the highest percentage of all states U.S. average was 42%, and the lowest percentage was in Vermont at 23%. Another 2008 Gallup poll found that 85% of Mississippians considered religion an important part of their daily lives, the highest figure among all states U.S. average 65%. Topic. Birth data Note, births in table don't add up, because Hispanics are counted both by their ethnicity and by their race, giving a higher overall number. Since 2016, data for births of white Hispanic origin are not collected, but included in one Hispanic group. Persons of Hispanic origin may be of any race. Topic. LGBT. The 2010 United States Census counted 6,286 same-sex unmarried partner households in Mississippi, an increase of 1,512 since the 2000 United States Census. 33% contained at least one child, giving Mississippi the distinction of leading the nation in the percentage of same-sex couples raising children. Mississippi has the largest percentage of African-American same-sex couples among total households. The state capital, Jackson, ranks 10th in the nation in concentration of African-American same-sex couples. The state ranks 5th in the nation in the percentage of Hispanic same-sex couples among all Hispanic households and 9th in the highest concentration of same-sex couples who are seniors. With the passing of HB 1523 in April 2016, from July it became legal in Mississippi to refuse service to same-sex couples, based on one's religious beliefs. The bill has become the subject of controversy. A federal judge blocked the law in July, however it was challenged and a federal appeals court ruled in favor of the law in October 2017. <laughs> <laughs> Health 
The state is ranked 50th or last place among all the states for health care, according to the Commonwealth Fund, a nonprofit foundation working to advance performance of the health care system. Mississippi has the highest rate of infant and neonatal deaths of any U.S. state. Age adjusted data also shows Mississippi has the highest overall death rate, and the highest death rate from heart disease, hypertension, and hypertensive renal disease, influenza, and pneumonia. In 2011, Mississippi and Arkansas had the fewest dentists in the United States. For three years in a row, more than 30% of Mississippi's residents have been classified as obese. In a 2006 study, 22.8% of the state's children were classified as such. Mississippi had the highest rate of obesity of any U.S. state from 2005 to 2008, and also ranks first in the nation for high blood pressure, diabetes, and adult inactivity. In a 2008 study of African American women, contributing risk factors were shown to be, lack of knowledge about body mass index BMI, dietary behavior, physical inactivity and lack of social support, defined as motivation and encouragement by friends. A 2002 report on African American adolescents noted a 1999 survey which suggests that a third of children were obese, with higher ratios for those in the Delta. The study stressed that, obesity starts in early childhood extending into the adolescent years and then possibly into adulthood. It noted impediments to needed behavioral modification, including the Delta likely being, the most underserved region in the state. With African Americans the major ethnic group, lack of accessibility and availability of medical care, and an estimated 60% of residents living below the poverty level. Additional risk factors were that most schools had no physical education curriculum and nutrition education is not emphasized. Previous intervention strategies may have been largely ineffective due to not being culturally sensitive or practical. A 2006 survey found nearly 95% of Mississippi adults considered childhood obesity to be a serious problem. Economy The Bureau of Economic Analysis estimates that Mississippi's total state product in 2010 was $98 billion. GDP growth was 0.5% in 2015 and is estimated to be 2.4 in 2016 according to Dr. Darren Webb, the state's chief economist, who noted it would make two consecutive years of positive growth since the recession. Per capita personal income in 2006 was $26,908, the lowest per capita personal income of any state, but the state also has the nation's lowest living costs. 2015 data records the adjusted per capita personal income at $40,105. Mississippians consistently rank as one of the highest per capita in charitable contributions. At 56%, the state has one of the lowest workforce participation rates in the country. Approximately 70,000 adults are disabled, which is 10% of the workforce. Mississippi's rank as one of the poorest states is related to its dependence on cotton agriculture before and after the Civil War, late development of its frontier bottomlands in the Mississippi Delta, repeated natural disasters of flooding in the late 19th and early 20th century that required massive capital investment in levees, and ditching and draining the bottomlands, and slow development of railroads to link bottomland towns and river cities. In addition, when Democrats regained control of the state legislature, they passed the 1890 Constitution that discouraged corporate industrial development in favor of rural agriculture, a legacy that would slow the state's progress for years. Before the Civil War, Mississippi was the fifth wealthiest state in the nation, its wealth generated by the labor of slaves in cotton plantations along the rivers. Slaves were counted as property, and the rise in the cotton markets since the 1840s had increased their value. By 1860, a majority 55%, of the population of Mississippi was enslaved. 90% of the Delta bottomlands were undeveloped and the state had low overall density of population. Largely due to the domination of the plantation economy, focused on the production of agricultural cotton, the state's elite was reluctant to invest in infrastructure such as roads and railroads. They educated their children privately. Industrialization did not reach many areas until the late 20th century. The planter aristocracy, the elite of antebellum Mississippi, kept the tax structure low for their own benefit, making only private improvements. Before the war the most successful planters, such as Confederate President Jefferson Davis, owned riverside properties along the Mississippi and Yazoo Rivers in the Mississippi Delta. 
Away from the riverfronts, most of the Delta was undeveloped frontier. During the Civil War, 30,000 Mississippi soldiers, mostly white, died from wounds and disease, and many more were left crippled and wounded. Changes to the labor structure and an agricultural depression throughout the South caused severe losses in wealth. In 1860 assessed valuation of property in Mississippi had been more than $500 million, of which $218 million was estimated as the value of slaves. By 1870, total assets had decreased in value to roughly $177 million. Poor whites and landless former slaves suffered the most from the post war economic depression. The Constitutional Convention of early 1868 appointed a committee to recommend what was needed for relief of the state and its citizens. The committee found severe destitution among the laboring classes. It took years for the state to rebuild levies damaged in battles. The upset of the commodity system impoverished the state after the war. By 1868 an increased cotton crop began to show possibilities for free labor in the state, but the crop of 565,000 bales produced in 1870 was still less than half of pre-war figures. Blacks cleared land, selling timber and developing bottomland to achieve ownership. In 1900, two-thirds of farm owners in Mississippi were blacks, a major achievement for them and their families. Due to the poor economy, low cotton prices and difficulty of getting credit, many of these farmers could not make it through the extended financial difficulties. Two decades later, the majority of African Americans were sharecroppers. The low prices of cotton into the 1890s meant that more than a generation of African Americans lost the result of their labor when they had to sell their farms to pay off accumulated debts. After the Civil War, the state refused for years to build human capital by fully educating all its citizens. In addition, the reliance on agriculture grew increasingly costly as the state suffered loss of cotton crops due to the devastation of the boll weevil in the early 20th century, devastating floods in 1912, 1913 and 1927, collapse of cotton prices after 1920, and drought in 1930. It was not until 1884, after the flood of 1882, that the state created the Mississippi Yazoo Delta District Levy Board and started successfully achieving longer-term plans for levies in the upper Delta. Despite the state's building and reinforcing levees for years, the Great Mississippi Flood of 1927 broke through and caused massive flooding of 27,000 square miles square kilometers throughout the Delta, homelessness for hundreds of thousands, and millions of dollars in property damages. With the Depression coming so soon after the flood, the state suffered badly during those years. In the Great Migration, hundreds of thousands of African Americans migrated north and west for jobs and chances to live as full citizens. Entertainment and tourism The legislature's 1990 decision to legalize casino gambling along the Mississippi River and the Gulf Coast has led to increased revenues and economic gains for the state. Gambling towns in Mississippi have attracted increased tourism, they include the Gulf Coast resort towns of Bay St. Louis, Gulfport and Biloxi, and the Mississippi River towns of Tunica the third largest gaming area in the United States, Greenville, Vicksburg and Natchez. Before Hurricane Katrina struck the Gulf Coast, Mississippi was the second largest gambling state in the Union, after Nevada and ahead of New Jersey. An estimated $500,000 per day in tax revenue was lost following Hurricane Katrina's severe damage to several coastal casinos in Biloxi in August 2005. Because of the destruction from this hurricane, on October 17, 2005, Governor Haley Barber signed a bill into law that allows casinos in Hancock and Harrison counties to rebuild on land but within 800 feet 240 meters of the water. The only exception is in Harrison County, where the new law states that casinos can be built to the southern boundary of U.S. Route 90. In 2012, Mississippi had the sixth largest gambling revenue of any state, with $2.25 billion. The federally recognized Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians has established a gaming casino on its reservation, which yields revenue to support education and economic development. Momentum Mississippi, a statewide, public private partnership dedicated to the development of economic and employment opportunities in Mississippi, was adopted in 2005. Manufacturing <inaudible> 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 Mississippi, like the rest of its southern neighbors, is a right-to-work state. 
It has some major automotive factories, such as the Toyota Mississippi plant in Blue Springs and a Nissan automotive plant in Canton. The latter produces the Nissan Titan. Taxation Mississippi collects personal income tax in three tax brackets, ranging from 3% to 5%. The retail sales tax rate in Mississippi is 7%. Tupelo levies a local sales tax of 2.5%. State sales tax growth was 1.4% in 2016 and estimated to be slightly less in 2017. For purposes of assessment for ad valorem taxes, taxable property is divided into five classes. On August 30, 2007, a report by the United States Census Bureau indicated that Mississippi was the poorest state in the country. Major cotton farmers in the Delta have large, mechanized plantations, and they receive the majority of extensive federal subsidies going to the state, yet, many other residents still live as poor, rural, landless laborers. The state's sizable poultry industry has faced similar challenges in its transition from family-run farms to large mechanized operations. Of $1.2 billion from 2002 to 2005 in federal subsidies to farmers in the Bolivar County area of the Delta, only 5% went to small farmers. There has been little money apportioned for rural development. Small towns are struggling. More than 100,000 people have left the region in search of work elsewhere. The state had a median household income of $34,473. As of March 2016, the state's unemployment rate was 6.5%, the third highest in the country after Alaska and West Virginia. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Federal subsidies and spending. With Mississippi's fiscal conservatism, in which Medicaid, welfare, food stamps, and other social programs are often cut, eligibility requirements are tightened, and stricter employment criteria are imposed, Mississippi ranks as having the second highest ratio of spending to tax receipts of any state. In 2005, Mississippi citizens received approximately $2.02 .02 per dollar of taxes in the way of federal spending. This ranks the state second highest nationally, and represents an increase from 1995, when Mississippi received $1.54 per dollar of taxes in federal spending and was third highest nationally. This figure is based on federal spending after large portions of the state were devastated by Hurricane Katrina, requiring large amounts of federal aid from the Federal Emergency Management Agency FEMA. However, from 1981 to 2005, it was at least number four in the nation for federal spending versus taxes received. A proportion of federal spending in Mississippi is directed toward large federal installations such as Camp Shelby, John C. Stennis Space Center, Meridian Naval Air Station, Columbus Air Force Base, and Keesler Air Force Base. Three of these installations are located in the area affected by Hurricane Katrina. Politics and government As with all other U.S. states and the federal government, Mississippi's government is based on the separation of legislative, executive and judicial power. Executive authority in the state rests with the governor, currently Phil Bryant R. The lieutenant governor, currently Tate Reeves R., is elected on a separate ballot. Both the governor and lieutenant governor are elected to four-year terms of office. Unlike the federal government, but like many other U.S. states, most of the heads of major executive departments are elected by the citizens of Mississippi rather than appointed by the governor. Mississippi is one of five states that elects its state officials in odd-numbered years the others are Kentucky, Louisiana, New Jersey and Virginia. Mississippi holds elections for these offices every four years, always in the year preceding presidential elections. Laws In 2004, Mississippi voters approved a state constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage and prohibiting Mississippi from recognizing same-sex marriages performed elsewhere. The amendment passed 86% to 14%, the largest margin in any state. Same-sex marriage became legal in Mississippi on June 26, 2015, when the United States Supreme Court invalidated all state-level bans on same-sex marriage as unconstitutional in the landmark case Obergefell v. 
Hodges, Mississippi is one of 31 states which have capital punishment as a legal sentence see capital punishment in Mississippi. Section 265 of the Constitution of the State of Mississippi declares that, "...no person who denies the existence of a supreme being shall hold any office in this state." This religious test restriction was held to be unconstitutional by the U.S. Supreme Court in Torcaso v. Watkins 1961. Topic: Political alignment. Mississippi led the South in developing a disfranchising constitution, passing it in 1890. By raising barriers to voter registration, the state legislature disenfranchised most blacks and many poor whites, excluding them from politics until the late 1960s. It established a one-party state dominated by white Democrats. In the 1980s whites divided evenly between the parties. In the 1990s those voters shifted their allegiance to the Republican Party, first for national and then for state offices. Most blacks were still disenfranchised under the state's 1890 constitution and discriminatory practices, until passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and concerted grassroots efforts to achieve registration and encourage voting. Transportation <inaudible> Air Mississippi has six airports with commercial passenger service, the busiest in Jackson, Jackson -Evers International Airport and one in Gulfport, Gulfport Biloxi International Airport. Roads <inaudible> 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 Mississippi is served by nine interstate highways and 14 main U.S. routes, as well as a system of state highways. For more information, visit the Mississippi Department of Transportation website. Rail Passenger Amtrak provides scheduled passenger service along two routes, the Crescent and City of New Orleans. Prior to severe damage from Hurricane Katrina, the Sunset Limited traversed the far south of the state. The route originated in Los Angeles, California, and it terminated in Florida. Topic: <laughs> Freight All but two of the United States Class I railroads serve Mississippi the exceptions are the Union Pacific and Canadian Pacific. Canadian National Railways Illinois Central Railroad subsidiary provides north-south service. BNSF Railway has a northwest-southeast line across northern Mississippi. Kansas City Southern Railway provides east-west service in the middle of the state and north-south service along the Alabama state line. Norfolk Southern Railway provides service in the extreme north and southeast. CSX has a line along the Gulf Coast. Topic: Water. Topic: Major rivers. Mississippi River, Big Black River, Pascagoula River Pearl River Tennessee Tombigbee Waterway Yazoo River Topic Major Bodies of Water Arkabootla Lake 19550 acres 79.1 square kilometers of water constructed and managed by the US Army Corps of Engineers Vicksburg District Bay Springs Lake 6700 acres 27 square kilometers of water and 133 miles 214 kilometers of shoreline constructed and managed by the US Army Corps of Engineers Granada Lake 35000 acres 140 square kilometers of water became operational in 1954 constructed and managed by the US Army Corps of Engineers Vicksburg District 
Ross Barnett Reservoir, named for Ross Barnett, the 52nd Governor of Mississippi, 33,000 acres 130 square kilometers of water, became operational in 1966, constructed and managed by the Pearl River Valley Water Supply District, a state agency, provides water supply for the city of Jackson. Sardis Lake 98,520 acres 398.7 square kilometers of water, became operational in October 1940, constructed and managed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Vicksburg District Enid Lake 44,000 acres 180 square kilometers of water, constructed and managed by the U.S. Army HTTP Skeptical Smiley Face, slash www.mvk.usace.army Mill, Missions, Recreation, Enid Lake Media Education Until the Civil War era, Mississippi had a small number of schools and no educational institutions for African Americans. The first school for black students was not established until 1862. During Reconstruction in 1871, black and white Republicans drafted a constitution that was the first to provide for a system of free public education in the state. The state's dependence on agriculture and resistance to taxation limited the funds it had available to spend on any schools. In the early 20th century, there were still few schools in rural areas, particularly for black children. With seed money from the Julius Rosenwald Fund, many rural black communities across Mississippi raised matching funds and contributed public funds to build new schools for their children. Essentially, many black adults taxed themselves twice and made significant sacrifices to raise money for the education of children in their communities, in many cases donating land and or labor to build such schools. Blacks and whites attended segregated and separate public schools in Mississippi until the late 1960s, although such segregation had been declared unconstitutional by the United States Supreme Court in its 1954 ruling in Brown v. Board of Education. In the majority black Mississippi Delta counties, white parents worked through white citizens' councils to set up private segregation academies, where they enrolled their children. Often funding declined for the public schools, but in the state as a whole, only a small minority of white children were withdrawn from public schools. State officials believed they needed to maintain public education to attract new businesses. After several years of integration, whites often dominated local systems anyway, maintaining white supremacy. Many black parents complained that they had little representation in school administration, and that many of their former administrators and teachers had been pushed out. They have had to work to have their interests and children represented. In the late 1980s, the state had 954 public elementary and secondary schools, with a total yearly enrollment of about 369,500 elementary pupils and about 132,500 secondary students. Some 45,700 students attended private schools. In the 21st century, 91% of white children in the state attend public schools and most of the black children. In 2008, Mississippi was ranked last among the 50 states in academic achievement by the American Legislative Exchange Council's report card on education, with the lowest average ACT scores and sixth lowest spending per pupil in the nation. In contrast, Mississippi had the 17th highest average SAT scores in the nation. As an explanation, the report noted that 92% of Mississippi high school graduates took the ACT, but only 3% of graduates took the SAT, apparently a self-selection of higher achievers. This breakdown compares to the national average of high school graduates taking the ACT and SAT, of 43% and 45%, respectively. Although unusual in the West, school corporal punishment is common in Mississippi, with 31,236 public school students paddled at least one time. A greater percentage of students were paddled in Mississippi than in any other state, according to government data for the 2011 2012 school year. In 2007, Mississippi students scored the lowest of any state on the national assessments of educational progress in both math and science. Jackson, the state's capital city, is the site of the state residential school for deaf and hard of hearing students. The Mississippi School for the Deaf was established by the state legislature in 1854 before the Civil War.
The Mississippi School for Mathematics and Science MSMS is a public residential high school for academically gifted students. It is located in Columbus, Mississippi on the campus of the Mississippi University for Women. MSMS was founded in 1987 by appropriations from the Mississippi Legislature and it is the fourth public, residential high school for academically gifted students in the United States. Three, the school enrolls students only in the last two years of high school. Rising 10th grade students from across the state apply and are selected on a competitive basis. The Mississippi School of the Arts MSA is an upper high school of literary, visual, and performing arts on the historic Whitworth College campus in Brookhaven, Mississippi, about 60 miles 97 kilometers south of Jackson, Mississippi. One MSA teaches 11th and 12th grade students. The campus has six buildings designated as Mississippi Landmarks, and is itself an historic district listed on the U.S. National Register of Historic Places. One. The Mississippi School of the Arts provides advanced, residential programs of study in visual arts, vocal music, theater, dance, and literary arts for artistically gifted 11th, 12th grade students from throughout Mississippi. 3 1 The comprehensive residential and academic curriculum prepares students for further studies or to pursue employment. Some non-arts courses some math, science, etc., are taught in conjunction with Brookhaven High School, six blocks away, to provide a wider curriculum. One, students apply for admission during their sophomore year. One. Culture While Mississippi has been especially known for its music and literature, it has embraced other forms of art. Its strong religious traditions have inspired striking works by outsider artists who have been shown nationally. Jackson established the USA International Ballet Competition, which is held every four years. This ballet competition attracts the most talented young dancers from around the world. The Magnolia Independent Film Festival, still held annually in Starkville, is the first and oldest in the state. George Orr, known as the Mad Potter of Biloxi, and the father of abstract expressionism in pottery, lived and worked in Biloxi, Mississippi. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Music. Musicians of the state's Delta region were historically significant to the development of the blues. Although by the end of the 19th century, two-thirds of the farm owners were black, continued low prices for cotton and national financial pressures resulted in most of them losing their land. More problems built up with the boll weevil infestation, when thousands of agricultural jobs were lost. Jimmy Rogers, a native of Meridian and guitarist, singer, songwriter known as the father of country music, played a significant role in the development of the blues. He and Chester Arthur Burnett were friends and admirers of each other's music. Their friendship and respect is an important example of Mississippi's musical legacy. While the state has had a reputation for being the most racist in the United States, individual musicians created an integrated music community. Mississippi musicians created new forms by combining and creating variations on musical traditions from Africa with the musical traditions of white Southerners, a tradition largely rooted in Scots Irish music. The state is creating a Mississippi Blues Trail, with dedicated markers explaining historic sites significant to the history of blues music, such as Clarksdale's Riverside Hotel, where Bessie Smith died after her auto accident on Highway 61. The Riverside Hotel is just one of many historical blues sites in Clarksdale. The Delta Blues Museum there is visited by tourists from all over the world. Close by is Ground Zero a contemporary blues club and restaurant co-owned by actor Morgan Freeman. Elvis Presley, who created a sensation in the 1950s as a crossover artist and contributed to rock and roll, was a native of Tupelo. From opera star Leontine Price to the alternative rock band Three Doors Down, to Gulf and Western singer Jimmy Buffett, modern rock, jazz, world music guitarist producer Clifton Hyde, to rappers David Banner, Big Krit and Afroman, Mississippi musicians have been significant in all genres. Music Literature Topic: Sports. 
Biloxi is home to the Biloxi Shuckers baseball team, a double-A minor league affiliate of the Milwaukee Brewers and member of the Southern League are currently located in Biloxi at MGM Park. Clinton is home to the Mississippi Brilla soccer team. The Brilla are a member of the USL Premier Development League. Pearl is home to the Mississippi Braves baseball team. The Braves are an double-A minor league affiliate of the Atlanta Braves. They play in the Southern League. Southaven is home to the Memphis Hustle basketball team. The Hustle are an affiliate of the Memphis Grizzlies. They play in the NBA G League. Topic: Notable people. Topic: See also. Index of Mississippi-related articles Outline of Mississippi – Organized list of topics about Mississippi Footnotes Further reading Dennis J. Mitchell, A New History of Mississippi Jackson, Mississippi, University of Mississippi Press, 2014. Topic: External links. Official website. Mississippi Travel and Tourism. Mississippi Development Authority. The Mississippi Believe It campaign. USDA Mississippi State Facts. University Press of Mississippi Ecoregions of Mississippi Mississippi at Curlie Mississippi as Metaphor State, Region, and Nation in Historical Imagination, Southern Spaces, October 23, 2006. Geographic data related to Mississippi at OpenStreetMap Mississippi State Databases – Annotated list of searchable databases produced by Mississippi State Agencies and compiled by the Government Documents Roundtable of the American Library Association